Hey guys, Mars Lincoln here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video and so today I've shown off most of the units on their own. In fact, everyone on this team I have done solo videos for now. So we are going to jump into the legendary Goku event with the crossover team. This is probably my current favorite build of the crossover team running the four new Super Saiyan 4s and then the two best support units in the game. Um, this team is incredibly powerful. Um, I have been link leveling up the four Super Saiyan 4s today. Um, so, like, if we have a look at Bardock and Super Saiyan 4 Vegito here, see? A couple of 7s and then 8s and even a 9. And then this friend Vegito, unfortunately, doesn't have super good links. I couldn't find any, like, really high ones. I think the only one rainbow one that I found that had decent level links had, like, no skill orbs. Whereas this guy's got some decent, like, extra crit and stuff like that. So, I, I decided I'd rather bring him. Besides the... Uh, the friend Vegito is just probably going to be floating anyway. Um, so I wasn't too bothered about his links. But Super Saiyan, 3 Bar Super Saiyan 4 Bardock, quite nice attack stat there for turn 1. Doesn't take any damage. And then, yeah, even this Vegito, very low level links, 2.7 million. Very decent for him. And obviously, he's not getting fierce battle from Bardock or anything. So um, Bardock is uh, going to be paired up with Gohan. They are each other's best link partner. And then um, Vegito, obviously, we're going to put with uh, Super Saiyan 4 Broly. Just allow him to really dish out some damage here. Um, so we need to float off um, Gohan. So we're going to do this. Because um, Broly, his defense... I mean, you guys have probably seen the Rainbow Showcase I did for him. Um, his defense really isn't bad after supering. Um, I have tried him out very quickly on the Legendary Goku event. And um, I got pretty far through with him still taking double digit damage from normals as long as he's super attacked first. So he really isn't that bad defensively as long as you get him to super. So I'm really intrigued to see how much damage he's going to take once we get to uh, the UI stages. Especially the last one of course because he'll have type disadvantage. But yeah 3.3 million attacks that here without having fierce battle active. Um, it's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, then he's just going to do it again. So, <laughs> see you later, Goku. <laughs> I honestly think after having played with them more, and I know Tiger was saying this before. Um, in fact, I'm recording this before the latest episode of the podcast, but it will probably go up afterwards. So I'm sure if you've uh, seen that episode already, we're probably going to talk about the new units quite a bit. Um, as much as I do love Super Saiyan 4 Vegito, like, I think he's an insanely good unit. Uh, I can definitely say I'm having more fun with... The Super Saiyan 4 Broly. But then, of course, they're each other's best link partner too on this team, right? So um, you, wanna, you want them both anyway. And then those two together on a rotation are just so good. So Bardock going to take a super here. 56k, not too bad. He's got his full passive on this team. So he's got like 180% defense, which is uh, very good. And... Uh, yeah, mixed up the rotation a little bit here because I figured Bardock would probably tank. I wasn't really thinking about the idea of a super because uh, Vegito definitely benefits from him super attacking first before he starts taking hits because he does raise his defense by 30%. That is something that we definitely have to keep in mind once we get onto the um, like Ultra Instinct stages, especially the STR one because uh, I think for that stage in particular, if we put Vegito in slot 1, He's probably going to take a fair bit of damage before getting his super off, uh, thanks to having the type disadvantage. Plus, I mean, you know, the UI Goku's hit pretty hard anyway. So, uh, Broly, decent attack stat considering none of his links are active. Unfortunately, without having a giant 8 power ally on the team, he doesn't, uh, on the turn, he doesn't get the guaranteed additional. Um, but, I mean, you saw there, he still took double digit damage from the normal attacks. And uh, Toa, she's got type advantage here, so she should finish off Super Saiyan 2 Goku. So, unfortunately, the uh, placement of the Vegitos means that we are uh, slacking a little bit on getting our main rotation set up. But here we go. We finally have Gohan and Bardock together. So, let's have a quick look at their stats here and their links here. Uh, Gohan, I believe, yeah, Gohan has Saiyan Raw at 10 already, and then the others are all 8 and 9, which is obviously very, very good. And then Bardock, very close as well. And then, yeah, my Vegito. Um, Kamehameha and Fierce Battle are still 6, everything else is 7, 8, or 9. So, very strong rotation here for the uh, Lynx as well. So, let's see what we can get. Obviously, Gohan is just going to tank like an absolute beast, because we do have the four um, other Great 8 Power allies. 
Uh, shout out to Truth for pointing out to me on Twitter that the friend Vegito and your Vegito do count as two separate allies. Um, people were saying it in the comments. I think I, I think the, the he mentioned it, but I think people were just getting confused with like the way the Infinite Dragon Ball history missions are. Like it doesn't count the leader as a second unit of the same thing. Um, so I think that's where I got confused. But yeah, his passive is active, so he's going to tank incredibly well all throughout this event because obviously mine is Rainbow already. Um, if you haven't seen it, check out the Rainbow Showcase for him. Unfortunately, his uh, full passive wasn't active in that showcase, so uh, he doesn't have the damage reduction. But that's the only thing he misses out on um, if the Great Ape allies aren't on the team. So obviously the uh, his attack and defense overall, um, he does have decent utility for certain events because he can stun on super attack. So, I mean, the Super Saiyan 4 Gohan can still be good on a team where there's no other Great Apes. Um, or at least, I say no other Great Apes, because obviously really you want him to have Saiyan Roar active if possible. But even without that 40% damage reduction, he's still a very solid unit. Uh, both him and the Bardock are going to become absolutely ridiculous when they eventually get Dokkan Awakenings. So, yeah, just Broly with a uh, you know, casual 4.2 million attack stat here. 2.8 million damage crit and then uh, here's another super attack for you um, yeah this Broly just is absolutely ridiculous I and mean, we didn't get the third one but yeah God Goku for a lot of teams you notice when you go through this uh, stage especially if you're trying to do the missions for completing it of all the different categories God Goku is definitely the first stage you get to where you notice he starts to hit that a little bit harder and uh, yeah Broly still just taking double digit damage and, of course, Supreme Kai of Time there showing off why she's such a great support unit. Um, that massive defense raise on her super obviously means that she is uh, very capable of tanking as well. So, uh, grab these for you. Oh, we can't get a super attack with uh, Toa. That's well, actually, it doesn't matter. He's going to be dead. I just realized how little health he has left. So, Gohan will finish him off here. Uh, he's got not only the type advantage, but also the damage mitigation. And uh, I really like his super attack. That last, like, uppercut part is, uh, I think, looks pretty cool. So, yeah, he's uh, he's the better one defensively uh, between him and Bardock. But, I mean, he's still putting up two, over 2 million attack stat um, for an unawakened unit who's, you know, the more defensive of the two. Like, Bardock definitely hits higher attack stats. But with the 40% uh, damage mitigation, Gohan can just become an absolute wall. So... Uh, I mean, even this Vegito here, like, my Vegito has two dupes. Um, we got no support unit on the rotation, and uh, he took double-digit damage from this blue Goku before supering and raising his defense. So, Broly at 4.5 with type advantage. Yep, 3 million damage. Okay. So, Broly probably takes out blue Goku here. So, yeah, th this team is absolutely uh, storming through this event. Oh, we didn't get the third one again. When he triple super attacks, man, it's so good. But how much damage is he going to take from this? Because his defense buff on super, like, doesn't stack. Wow, 9,500 damage. Is that it? Like, I know we have type advantage, but, you know, weaker defensive units um, would have still taken, like, more damage there, despite being tech. So... Yeah, his defense definitely not as bad as we were sort of worrying about when his stats and that were first revealed. Um, I think he is actually very, very good. I'm going to run the little bit of a risk here of putting Bardock in slot one. Um, just because we are definitely getting the Dokkan attack this turn. And he is going to hit a lot harder than uh, Gohan. So I'm just I'm just kind of hoping that uh, Ultra Instinct Goku doesn't super attack in slot one here. But... I mean, Bardock only taking a couple of thousand damage from STR UI Goku with no items active. Oh, really? Damn you, mouse books. Um, is actually really good. His attack stat is what? 2.4 million? Um, and again, like, fair enough, though, these units, when they do awaken, um, unless they decide to awaken them with the medals from Super Saiyan 4 Vegito's Dokkan event, which would be awesome because then they would have first battle, um, chances are they probably will awaken with Shattering the Limit. But. Showering the limit is not so bad. I was talking um, to someone about this earlier today. Back in the day, if a unit got Showering the Limit over Fierce Battle, then it was considered kind of a shaft. And then as more units and like more summonable LRs and stuff started to get it, people started to be less bothered by it. And then, of course, with the Link update at Link level 10, Showering the Limit does actually give you a bit of a bonus as well. So, of course, of all the units on the turn, though, um, he would have to super attack... 
the Supreme Kai of Time. But that does kind of work out in our favor because that means we get Toa's passive to go off here with Broly on rotation. So Broly is now getting the 50% buff from Toa, which means when he super attacks here, his defense is going to go up to over 200k. And uh, Vegito has 137. Right? Obviously, they share a lot of their links. Um, obviously, they both have some sort of specific links that Broly's are obviously better shared with some extreme units. And Vegito's are better shared with some, like, Patara units. But they link together very, very well. Um, I really don't want to use an item here. Because I feel like this team could know items this run. But... I'm a little bit worried about Vegito in slot 1, but let's go ahead and see. As long as he doesn't super in slot 1 and not get countered. Yeah, see, 42k before supering. That's quite a bit. But after he supers here now, he should be okay uh, defensively. It's a shame, obviously, because Toa gives that extra 50% from her passive only to extreme allies. Um, but yeah, Vegito obviously able to tank well enough after supering. And then Broly at 4.5 million attacks that very very good at least i'm pretty sure her passive went off right were we below 50 percent at the start of the turn i feel like we were but and then she's got a million attack stat as well um she probably is the weakest one defensively just because supreme kai of time does give herself that 100 percent defense raise yeah she takes 65k Oof. um so we'll want to do this i think we probably can't avoid having to heal um a super attack on Bardock or Vegito that doesn't get countered would be death here. So I think what we'll do, we'll just go ahead and use this. Get a heal and some damage reduction. That should enable everyone on this turn, including Bardock, to tank incredibly well. I mean, obviously Gohan, this will do double digit damage to Gohan. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that 48 damage, Kamehameha, uh, Goku. Oh, well, okay. He'll respond by dodging Gohan super attack. I guess that's only fair. But... <laughs> Super Saiyan 4 Bardock. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the... Because uh, we started the turn on low health, we didn't get his type advantage or guaranteed crit. So even though he had a decent attack stat there, he didn't do a crazy amount of damage. Um, but the friend Vegito coming in with the crit and no super. Okay, good. Um, yeah, see, like I say, this is the t these are the turns where it gets a little bit more sketchy because we've already seen Vegito probably takes about, what was it, 40k? From these attacks in slot 1 before supering. Um, and then of course if we get supered and don't counter. We have type disadvantage. But Hey there's that level 3 dodge though. See level 3 dodge. I mean in this particular situation. Level 3 dodge is saving us from taking 40k damage. So very very good. And then we get the crit. So Broly's going to come in for the KO here. With that nice big attack stat there. Takes out. Ultra Instinct Goku. So, final phase. Int UI Goku. Um, I, I feel like I definitely need to use an item here. As much as I really want to see Gohan just take no damage from him, because he will, with no item active and Toa on rotation, we've already seen that Bardock and Toa definitely do start to take a little bit more damage now. Um, like, Toa was taking, what, 60k from the STR UI Goku? So, I don't want to... Uh, take a risk here because uh, Bardock and Darkness Toa or Demoness Toa I'm going to get that mixed up all the time now They're, those names are so similar for the same character as well I mean um, but yeah they will take quite a bit of damage even from normal so if we took a super this turn when there's this many attacks unless it was on Gohan of course then uh, we could potentially be in trouble so I don't mind dropping the uh, item just to keep us uh, secure so that means everyone's going to tank really well Bardock taking double digits I don't know if Toa will um, her defense is still pretty good though so she's not going to take a crazy amount of damage hopefully he doesn't super attack her but yeah 26 that's not too bad and then of course this really pays off for this turn because uh, the Vegitos have already got type advantage oh, if Broly can get crits the sheer amount of damage that we will do this turn is going to be uh, pretty insane and the Icarus is active, so I actually think, unless it's a super, Broly should take double digit damage in the middle. Because we've seen he can push his defense up to nearly 200k on a rotation like this where there's two other units giving him support. Um, and then we have the Icarus active as well, so he's really not going to take any damage unless it's a super here, I think. No crit, additional normal, come on, give me, give me that additional crit super. 
Okay, this. Here we go. Ah. Oh. <laughs> so in you I Goku with the dodge. But then yeah, we take double digit damage. So friend Vegito hitting a three mil. Like this rotation is just so good. It's so powerful. It's so much fun. Um, you get the counter supering potential from Vegito. Broly's just out here pumping out ridiculous amounts of damage. Um, this team is just incredibly fun to run. That's why I've been going out hard leveling, like link leveling everyone today, because uh, this team is just so good. Now, I'm a little bit concerned about the damage potential for this turn, but what should we do here? I mean, what are our actual defenses? See, Gohan has 150k defense and 40% damage reduction, so he's not taking any damage. Uh, Supreme Kaya time, when she super attacks, her defense will go up to about 130k. I'm not sure if that's good enough with a, um, with type disadvantage being a factor, but I guess we can go ahead and use this. I'm really not fussed about just burning a couple of items here at the end, so. I think you could quite easily make a crossover team build that could no items this stage, but you probably wouldn't bring Supreme Kai of Time or Toa, to be fair. And, uh, yeah, Goku goes ahead and supers Gohan. He takes 19k. <laughs> I mean... It's basically nothing. When you consider that an Android 8 upping your defense is obviously not giving anywhere near as much protection as an actual damage reduction item. So, yeah, I, I will take 19k damage from uh, a super attack. <laughs> and then, yeah, everyone... See, Bardock's defense good enough that just the Android 8 boost means that he's not taking any damage either. And then... Hopefully, Supreme Kai of Time, with the boost from the item, she'll be getting close to 200k defense. Yeah, so now even she's taking double-digit damage. So, very, very good. And then, of course, that's still active for this turn. Uh, I feel like Toa, even with that item active, Toa is probably going to take a bit of damage in this final spot here. But even if it's a super, the rest of the t uh, rotation is going to tank so well, I don't think we'd be in any trouble of dying here. So... This is where I want to see Broly actually come in with those uh, crits on his supers. Because unfortunately, type disadvantage really puts a dampener on the damage you do. Because this man is putting out some insane attack stats. But that type advantage definitely uh, hurts the damage that he does if we're not getting them crits. Yeah, see, not even hitting. We're only hitting for like just over half a mil. His normal attack almost did that much. So that is a little bit of a shame. If... Uh, this final UI Goku was anything other than Int. This Super Saiyan 4 Broly would be absolutely destroying him. But And then he super attacks Toa. Okay, this is easily going to do like 250k. So it's a good thing everything else basically did double digits. Oh, 345 you say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a lot of damage. Uh, fortunately, he stacked up all of his attacks in the, sl in the first slot. Like a fool. So we'll go ahead and... Future Bulma, get a nice little attack buff here. And then, uh, yeah, we should do some very nice damage this turn. And, of course, Vegito being in the back slot, not going to take any damage due to the uh, type advantage. So, Gohan, just going to shrug off all of these attacks. Nearly a 3 million attack stat for him as well. Like, I feel like I'm just going to mention it over and over and over again. But, like, I can't wait to see what these two do when they have their actual awakenings. Like, they're already so good. Bardock at a 3 million attack stat. Mine only has two dupes. Um, <laughs> I mean, these guys are just absolutely crazy. Oh, no crit from Vegito. So, I guess we're finishing him off with Vegito next turn. Because it's, uh, it's a little bit too risky to be putting uh, Super Saiyan 3 Broly in slot 1, unfortunately. So, uh... Who knows, maybe Vegito will uh, not crit and it won't be enough, but this will be the final turn here. Yeah, double digit damage. No items active, my Vegito 79%, and yeah, he just does, doesn't take damage from in UI Goku. And we still had the item active, so 3.6 on the attack, but unfortunately, he dodges. But that means Broly can come in 5.7 million. That's the highest attack stat I've seen from him. Because um, obviously I did use the attack up item, which I haven't done previously. And uh, yeah, we crit for 3.3 million <laughs> damage. So, I mean, there you go. If they ever add a mission to the Legendary Goku event to beat it with the crossover team, um, that's probably going to be one of the easiest missions for this uh, for this stage. 
So there you go. We didn't set a new time limit or anything. I'm not too fussed about that. It wasn't a uh, speed run or anything crazy. We only used half our items. Um, like I said, I think if you replace the two support units, you could easily know items this stage. But yeah, that is a very good run from a very strong team. I'm just incredibly impressed with this team, with these units, with the hero celebration in general. Um, the fact that they dropped it on both versions, like, as a global player, we are eating good right now. So, let me know what you guys think down below. What is your favourite build of the crossover team to run? Uh, who is your favourite Heroes unit? Just just let me know everything Heroes related down below in the comments. So, that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Master Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the link to my Discord down in the description. Feel free to join in the fun over there. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.